want a um, happy belated birthday. Thank you, Bob. I wish you were there. I wasn't invited, so. Because you were in New York City rehearsing. You don't know. First of all, you don't know what I was doing. I and didn't. I know exactly what you were doing because we had a meeting that uh, the day before. All I'm saying is I wasn't invited. That's all I'm saying. No, and that's so, not the truth. I wasn't invited. Oh, I, you absolutely thank you, were Jacob. invited. Where? Thank you, where? Jacob. I, I, I will allow both of you thank to screen grab and show me. Even when you can show me where I was invited. Great. Not, not, not Monet telling you I'm invited. When did I get invited? Great. Here is the text message from Andy. Um, is it to me? Not, um, is it to me? It is to, it is to both of us, Andy and Caldwell. Is it to me? Oh, Andy it to and me? Caldwell. Oh! Is it to oh, me? Jacob Ritz. Mm, 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 mm. With well, the nice motherfucking of, receipts. Well, nice of Andy to invite me to something when I wasn't in town. Very, very friendly of Andy. <laughs> very friendly of Andy. <laughs> Oh, it's Jacob. Very friendly. Oh, my God, Jacob. Jacob, that tasted like a caviar, filet mignon, uh, branzino, uh, uh, milky. Bitch, spell uh, branzino. Spell branzino. Uh, oyster. B-R-A-N-Z-I-N-O. B-R-A-N-Z-I-N-O. Define yeah. branzino. Branzino. Define branzino. Branzino is a type of fish, honey. Anyway, mm. Jacob, that was probably it, the most delectable, and where is it native to? And where is it native to? Thing I have ever experienced where, in my life. I am literally Branzino, going to. Where's the Branzino native to? Huh? I am going to come in my pants right now. Thank you, Jacob. Mane, where are you? So, where, were you um, my, where were you on my birthday, Mona? <laughs> Bitch, remember when I threw you a birthday party? Where were you on my birthday? <laughs> where, where were you? On a side oh. note, I'm looking back at this text. Andy sent this at five in the morning. Should Thank you. Yeah, I was asleep. So, so what? Uh, so you don't you don't read your text messages when you were asleep? And, and what was the date? And what was the date? What was the date? Who cares? What was the date, Jacob? I want to know the date right now. What was the date? <laughs> oh, now you quiet. Now all of a sudden you quiet. Watched, what was the date? I watched. I watched a compilation of beads of the yeah, Bob the, the Dragon date? I want to know the date. January thirtieth. Mm. Oh, I was January out of town. motherfucking thirtieth. Wow. Anyway, Honestly, there's some shade. My birthday was very fun. We went to we went paintballing. Uh, we got twelve of us. We went paintballing, and honestly, Bob, you would fucking love paintball. It was so fun. I did not think it'd be that fun. It was so much fucking fun. I was like, we want to go back and like do it like all the time. It was fucking dope. I, I, if anyone here has done paintball before, you know, that shit was dope. I think Jacob would have a good time too. I was afraid because, you know, you see things where you see it's going to hurt you, but it really does not hurt, especially if you wear like a thick sweater and like sweatpants. You don't feel the balls hit you like that. And I thought it was so fun. Patty, you know, Patty gets real Mississippi when it got to uh, 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 things like this. Oh, was, I wouldn't Patty have, was, I wouldn't have no uh, redneck a gun, girl. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't Patty get shot in the face? No. Somebody got shot in the face. I know Assad's boyfriend got shot in the ear. Yeah, Assad's boyfriend got shot in the ear, and um, Pat, uh, Andy got shot in his head. But that's that's about uh, it. That's Everyone else got. Andy. Oh yeah, Andy was bleeding because it missed the. I, I heard that. bleeding. Ooh, I'm out. And for he that was reason, not I'm bleeding. Out. He he had he had he had a bruise. Y'all niggas always bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so it was a lot of fun, and um, <laughs> your arch, your your arch nemesis Jenny Jaffe was there. <laughs> Would you stop? And she was stop re- this narrative. Would you stop? You are, this is your arch nemesis. Would you stop? <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> stop. Jenny this, and the- Jenny and Jenny and Jacob are good friends now. Oh yeah, it was just at her birthday party. It was really fun. Which is Jenny? Jenny and her little husband get whoops. Okay. <laughs> I love Jenny. Do you think I could? Do you think I could take both of them out at the same time? No, Dan will tear you up. You think so? Dan will tear you up. I don't remember what Dan, Dan has a with. sword. He has a real sword. Does he carry it everywhere? <laughs> he gonna carry it to fight you? You know, I used to have. You know, I used to carry. You know, I used to have those two swords. You remember my Deadpool swords? Oh, you did. Where are they? I gave them to Domino because Domino does cosplay stuff, and I and I had these swords forever. I had these swords for a long time, and I was like, I I bought the swords at uh D. At Denver Comic Con, and I was like, I bought these swords. Like one day I'm going to use these Deadpool swords, so I bought these two swords, and then I bought them before I ever had the outfit. And then for Look Queen, I had uh, the Lady Hyde uh, make me a Deadpool gown, 
with the swords and I put the swords on the back and I wore it, I think one time and I never I wore those swords ever again. And I would just sit around with just swords in my house, two entire <laughs> swords. But Isn't also the thing though? is you can't unsheath them like they do in the movies. In the movies, it's like, well, swing. I think if you're skilled, Bob, if you're someone who knows how to do it, you can do it. I think it's about the length of your arm because I would put, even if I pull my arm, even at my, with, with my long ass arms, all the way out, the sword was still in the sheath. So I couldn't do both at the same time. I thought I'd take one, like, it was like. Look at, looking clumsy as hell. Look, but clumsy I'm sure as there awesome. is, I'm sure, Maybe there's some way to do it, but th- I felt like the sheets were just too long or something. Yeah, I remember those dope swords. I mean, that's drag. Drag queens always have having random shit in their house. And it's always when you give shit away, you throw something away, that's when you're like, oh, I wish I had, fuck, I gave it away to someone like last week. I mean, I haven't needed those swords, but every once in a while I do wish I had some swords because I used to love swords as a kid. Whenever I go to Comic-Con, I'm always tempted to buy a weapon because they make these really like fantastical looking mm-hmm. daggers and axes and mm-hmm. battle axe and hammers. And Wolverine claws, and they look so cool. I want Wolverine claws. I want Wolverine claws. That's very attainable. That's yeah. very very attainable. They, you know, they make them, they them on like a bar. They're they're like on a. You never been to Comic Con? No, I've never been to a Comic Con before. I wouldn't go to New York. I went to I went to Denver because I just happened to be in town. I was, I was doing drag in Denver at the time, and um, for me the most exciting thing was seeing the costumes. But honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is no shade to. This is no shade to Comic Con people, but like I'm used to seeing a certain level of costumery, you know what I mean? And there are some, there are some, there are some Comic Con costumes that are like, oh my god, but most mm-hmm. of them are like, oh, not the straight people doing Halloween, not the straights doing Halloween. But you did go to Denver, like the big one. Everyone who talks about, it, I, I always hear about, it, is San Diego Comic Con. That's drag like Denver that's like the, drag. That's the big Comic Con. What are you saying about Willow Pill? What are you saying about what are you saying about <laughs> Evie Adelaide? The big one is San Diego Comic Con. That's the one that's like fierce and legendary. So I imagine that that one is where people pull out all the stops. You're probably right. Yeah, but the weapons were really cool. I now want to go buy a sword. Is there is there, is there a sword what? from a? Sh- because they look cool. Like swords look cool. I mean, I got rid. I mean, I, I bought two and I got rid of both of them, but they just look really cool to me. I want the katana from or, or the yeah the katana from Avatar. Katana. From, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not. Let me Google Avatar. Avatar or maybe Katana. it's not called a Katana. That, do you mean the Last Airbender or like the Blue People? No, the Last Airbender, the one that um that um that um uh I'm like I've been watching so long. The brother Zuko. Z- no, not oh, Zuko. And, uh, no, uh, no, um Sokka. Sokka, Sokka sword. The one that he that's this is like sword. I want one. It's like dark. It's like from like alien metal. Sokka sword. Sokka's sword. Oh, this thing. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You can, uh, Etsy is really good for finding stuff like that. I mean, I don't really want to. Where, where am I going to put that? I, I also kind of want, um, Psylocke's weapon. The, the, the light up thing. And I also want Cabal from Mortal Kombat. Those two Oops. hook sword things. I that's like good. Cabal's weapon. And I, I also like, uh, God of War that, like, that axe he's swinging around. Oh my god, Bob! Have you played God of War? No, but Jacob plays it. Oh, I, I made he, I, I made him play um, God the new the old one. Got him the the old and the new ones, and he played like the first two hours and then stopped. It's so, yeah, so I mean, good. It's such a good I, game. I played I played before. Sometimes when Jacob plays games, he introduces me to certain games. He introduced me to. Uh, Sometimes I love them. He introduced me to Spider Man. I was not really into that one. He introduced me what? to what? I said, I, "Oh, you probably didn't hear me. Uh, maybe because you haven't had because your ears aren't as clean as mine. Not everyone's ears are as clean as mine." <laughs> if you all heard on the last on the last podcast, um, and then Jacob introduced me to uh, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I loved. I hate uh, that game. Jacob introduced me to um, Fortnite, it's which too I much. love. Z- Jacob- Breath of the Wild is too much. You have you're left too much to figure to do on your own. Is I I need I need like a guided story to take me through. No 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 no. There is a guided story. 
There, there, there is yeah, a guy. But there's so much choice in that open world. There's too much choice. Okay, well, choo- bitch, choo- choose to follow the guide, bitch. Choose to follow the guide. But there, but there, are, there are like different stuff, things you can do in the guide. It's like it's like not as linear yeah. as like God of War. And like God of War, there's like a linear path you can go. With Breath of the Wild, there's like four paths you can go. And I can't. I can't. I would say there's probably more than four. I mean, you know, on, on Breath of the Wild, you could, you could in theory, go, sh- go straight to the final boss and get your ass kicked. Right. If you... Right. If you want to, like everything's already everything. What I love about it is that everything already exists in the world. You know what I mean? Like all the stuff already exists. You have to just build up and build. I think it's really, I think it's really cool. Jacob introduced me to Fortnite, which I absolutely love. I just got back into Fortnite recently, but I'm so bad at it. All my oh, friends, God. like we all started Fortnite at the same time, and now everyone is so good. And I'm like, and I spent like a year and a half not playing, so now I'm just like garbage at the game, and everyone's just a thousand years past me. And of course, uh, I don't know who introduced me to Smash. Was it you or was it Jacob? Me. You started playing Smash because you because you had a vendetta. Like you you had to beat me. Oh, because you said you would. You said I would. You will. Yeah, you will never beat me in Smash. And do you want to apologize for that now? <laughs> no. You never want to apologize for anything. Have I ever got? Have I ever gotten an apology from this podcast? <laughs> I actually don't know if I've ever gotten. I'm actually starting to think. I don't think I've ever. <laughs> Once gotten an apology from this podcast, and we've been doing this for how many years have we been doing this for now? Oh have you God. ever apologized to me? Have you ever apologized to anyone? Can you name one person you've apologized to? And can we get them on the podcast to, to verify it, please? Did you apologize to Tamisha? Did you? <laughs> I did. I did you apologize did? to Tamisha, but I mm. did at DragCon. Mm. We'll see. Anyway, I, I found a, I found a text the other day. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to find it because it was it was on. I actually didn't bring it up because I'm not gonna be able to find. It. You know when you try to find something you can't find it and it's like I might as well just shut up now. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll just I'll just shut up because I, I won't be able to find it. So Literally no. us on the podcast all the time. You mean? There was I saw. How do you look up your memories on Facebook? Your mem I don't I, I girl I have not been on Facebook in so long I could not tell you. Like, like sometimes when you log in, they're just available there. Facebook, what in the boomer? But I saw. What did you I find? Saw, what was it? I saw a Facebook status from someone who like, who like does not like. Well, I I don't know that for someone who who I've had discourse with online before, but it was like such a friendly, it was such a friendly um, Facebook status to me, and I was like, I forgot they used to like me. I, if I find it, I'll read it. But I won't say okay. this from, but I'll read it though. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, Smash. I've been really heavy my Smash back lately, so I've been so I've been I'm a I'm, I'm a good Young Link player, but I wouldn't want to take my Young Link to like the next level because I played this one computer because now I'm in above ten thousand GSP with Young Link, so I'm by, finding like really good players. And I fought one that what I tell you, I could not get my feet on the ground. This motherfucker was juggling me like he was bozo the fucking clown. Like I could not touch ground. And so I'm really, I've been, I want to be a better Young Link player. So I've been really, really, I've been looking, I've been watching like YouTube videos and practicing a lot to get my Young Link like out of this. Have world. you ever played with a uh, with a uh, fucking what's her name? What's her name, Jake? Kyren Mitra. No, La Mama from Drag Race. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Kamara Hall. Kamara Hall. Ka- yeah, oh, she's she, really good. She will gather you. You talk about you can't catch your breath. Can you keep up? No. When she, when, when, <laughs> she's really she gets, good. If she gets one hit with that fucking uh, bayonetta, it is a wrap. For yeah, you. she's really good. But like, there's so much. There's so much to being, and like they're using all like these like all the all, all this language. Um, you, you have to do a bear, a fair, uh, a hop squat jump, uh, um, a hop squat leap up. And I'm like, what? I bet she has a whole vernac- like a whole vocabulary. I don't know for that. Like really good players use. Like, are you watching like videos and stuff? Yeah, videos. Oh, like about like how to play. I, sometimes I be I be watching little videos like how to be a better uh, Smash player too. But sometimes I'm like, you just gotta get your ass out there and and work. It's like work. no one wants to work anymore. Wait, who do you think? Okay, who is your best Smash player? Like your best, best, best Smash player? Uh, me Gunner. Really? I'm best. It's I'm not. Best it's not Villager. I I just love playing Villager. So I'm, I am pretty good with Villager, but I I play with Villager the most. But but when it's like I need to win, I'm gonna pick me gunner, for sure. Mm. How does that work out for you when we play? I think I think there's online footage and evidences. 
Let's Evidence. play tonight then. What's up? What's good, Mary? Do you yeah. know what? Okay, do you want to start? Do you want to start on a sibling rivalry TikTok? Us just doing I want to know how to stream games on TikTok and we could just because I mean I spend hours playing Smash. We should do like start putting it on our on our um sibling rivalry. Jacob knows, how to, Jacob, Jacob knows how to do it, and so does um um Mitch. You just Kevin. gotta uh you got Kevin who? Oh. You hot Kevin. Oh, he knows he knows how to do it too. Kevin, 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 wherever his name is. Kevin the streamer. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Kevin McDonald. He knows how to stream too. Yeah. Um, we we have a game specifically though. Yeah, yeah. We we have a game capture. How to stream to TikTok? Yeah, you need a game capture card and restream. It's its own thing. Um, you TikTok doesn't let you stream on it. Anybody's TikTok doesn't let Jacob. (laughs) We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. Yeah, let's take a break. Ooh, that felt good. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure because I, I was Tick- trying to oh, look, look it up. It's TikTok, it. TikTok is different. Yeah, it's like it's like its own. It's not like the it's not like the little capture card thing is different. No, that's like a restream link. No, TikTok grants out stream links as they see fit. So not everybody can stream live stream on TikTok from like Twitch. Oh. You probably can because you have enough followers, but. You need to look into it. They they grant it to you. Got it. Um, I mean, I I mean, I don't know. If this is true, but I don't see a lot of black streamers. Maybe I'm also not looking. I also like stumble upon them. I'm not like looking, and I remember there's, seeing there's, that. There's, was, there's, def- there's definitely black streamers. Well, I stumbled sure. into a into, into 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 a tweet thing about saying, um, I know black people stream uh, 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 the bias of black streamers on TikTok. But I, think I don't that know. The, I don't, I'm not uh, the, that the much. gamer of the the gamer of the year the streamings was a I show speed who's like a really he's like huge right now. I show speed is a massive massive gamer. I just sent you and, the uh, Sonic that, Fox. Sonic is Fox. The yeah, Sonic one? Fox. He, he's, yeah, he's the best Mortal Kombat player like in the world apparently. Money. I have oh, a for you. I just saw your t- bitch work. Um, money. Okay, question. Are you team yes. light skin or are you team dark skin? Oh my god, you're such a messy. You're a bad person. Were you were you ever asked that as a kid? No, I was never asked that as a kid. Not once could I remember. I try to remember when I was really conscious of colorism. And I don't think it was not until like high school I realized it was such a big thing. Do you identify as dark skin? I think I I, I think I identify as but somewhere in medium, medium to dark, somewhere there. Who's light skin? Can you name a light skinned black person? Naomi Smalls is light skinned. Um, Robin Thede is light skinned. Uh, uh Tashina Arnold. That's Robin Thede. Oh, Thede. Yeah. Um. Um. Tishina I mean, Ar- Tisha um, Campbell is Tisha Campbell. I'm about to say, say Tashina Arnold. Um, yeah. Who red bone? Who red bone? See, it's so, okay. I am. I thought red bone and light skin. High yellow. No. Right, um, like the, all those little ones. Uh, those are very southern. And and up north, like in New York, it was only like light skin and dark skin. No one was like high yellow or as Asia would say, paper sack, uh, paper sack brown. Like we don't we don't use those kind of qualifiers. Well, I think it's because of the the extreme uh, status tied to skin color amongst black people um as a uh result of jim crow in the south that makes southerner black southerners so tied to their identity in regards to their uh you know a proximity to light skinness yeah you but i mean do you know do you, yeah we say light skinned and dark skinned what other well what other words do, did y'all use like i know paper sack brown high yellow what are the other ones is it high yellow? Was, uh, is, is, is it only for light skin? Is it not for dark skin? Yeah, I never heard any. I never heard any for for dark skin people. So I was just dark skin. I mean, you know, I I I'm pre- I'm pretty dark skin. I'm I'm a, I'm a relatively dark person. Um, I'm a, I'm I'm I am like darker skin than than most black people I know, <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. I definitely got a lot of shit as a kid for being dark skin. It was uh it was really kind of annoying. I was I was also like a dark skin but I was never light skin. Like you know I was like we're like got darker as they got older. I was like a even like pictures of me as a small baby. I was like a very dark skin 
baby. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I went to an all like all black schools, and I and my nickname was still Blackie. Isn't that crazy? Like when I, I mean, like when you. I mean, not true. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I don't think that's crazy because when you have all black kids, you're gonna have such a wide range of black kids, right? So everyone is trying to like find their their color tribe, even within all the black kids. So it's it's not crazy. Like I, I can see how that could be a thing. Yeah, I mean, it it happened. Whenever people hear my nickname was Blackie, they a lot of people just assume that I went to like an all white school in Georgia, and I was like, no, nope, all black, and the nickname was still giving black. Imagine white kids calling you Blackie in school. That would no, nah, that's crazy. When I went to school in in uh, Alabama too, so uh, you know I, I've heard white kids call black people a lot of crazy stuff, and I think in in, in the north that sounds crazy, but in, in Georgia, in Georgia, that does not sound like. That does not sound that crazy. Because I used to live, so there was one point when I, when I lived in Alabama, I, for my time in Alabama, I lived in a white neighborhood. There were mm-hmm. there were three black families in this whole neighborhood. And mm-hmm. um, and now I think it is, I think it is now a black neighborhood. I think we, 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 col- we reverse colonized that shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I remember we moved in and there was, there was a, there was a, 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 a black family next door. And like, like the dad was black, the mom was white and the kids were all, you know, like light skinned black people, and mm-hmm. then me and my family were ne- right next door, so we we were like the two black houses side by side. And then like years later, this family from Syracuse, New York, moved in around the corner, and they, I remember they were Jehovah's Witnesses, and I was afraid of them as a kid because oh, I was afraid God. of Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. as a child. Um, and that was the only black. And baby, when I tell you, when I tell you, those white kids were very creative, and not just the kids, baby, their parents. They were very creative when it came to describing me and my brother and my mother. Oh, they 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 got really rambunctious. How did y'all know? Because they would say it to our faces. They would say it right to our faces, Monet. Like they, they would call us all kinds of n words. They would uh like like if you know kids fight and stuff, but it just immediately turned racist. Like immediately, it would just turn into like extremely racist name calling, or like their parents would be like. I don't want you hanging around my son. I know what you and your black for brother are up to. He's really? Since, oh, yeah. Like it, it honestly like a scene from a movie. That's crazy. That is well, absolutely insane. And that's on Phoenix City, Alabama. Yeah, I don't that's not my experience. Like I I've, I've talked about I've talked about I've talked about this before, and I don't know, it's because I was so young. I just wasn't aware of it. But in St. Lucia, like the like, a colorism. And racism was not something that was very prevalent. And again, I lived there from the time I was one to 10 years old. So that's really young. But a lot of my friends, like their first experience with racism and colorism, they remember from like when they're like in single digits. So I don't remember having that experience in St. Lucia. Well, but when I moved to America, I realized that. Racially speaking, is it is it relatively homogenized in St. Lucia? Did you go to school with any white kids? Well, I was gonna say, n- not many. There were maybe like one or two, but even the, even, but you would think that would be even weirder, right? Because they're like, oh, there's that one person that's different, you know. But no, like there were like maybe one or two white like uh, white kids in in school, and there were white people that lived around town, and like, you know, uh, wh- the white families live in St. Lucia. That's not a strange thing, but it was just not that big of a deal. Um, but and, and not even colorism either. I mean, again, maybe I I I, I, I don't want to I don't want someone listening to this from and be like, girl, what are you talking about? Blah 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 blah. But I just did not see colorism play a part in my development. It was not I was not conscious of it at all as a kid. Well, no one was gonna make fun of there. you because you were literally the child of the richest woman in Saint Lucia, so they're all afraid of you. I mean, one bad word about you, and Jackie would have their heads like, I mean. Literally, they they saw what Someone happened. Someone when- tagged me in the in in the BTDQ fucking compilation of you talking about Monet's rich kid, and I was watching it, and I was laughing. At oh, it's it is the funniest thing. You are. This is the let me try it now. Uh, BTDQ videos. If you're listening, <laughs> that one is the funny. I was cackling, scream. I was on the plane watching on the plane to New York <laughs> City, and I was like, they're gonna throw me off this plane because I'm laughing so <laughs> loud. That is the funniest is- shit in the world. The one of the funniest, one of the funny moments is when I'm talking about um, how I was a kid and they, I was like, um, I was like, yeah, and I, so I got the scar on my leg when me and my brother were running and they were um, adding, um, <laughs> and you were like adding to the, adding to the estate. <laughs> um, but yeah, Monet, no one made fun of you because they know what happened when Julietta uh, back talked to you one time. <laughs> that's what. That's why no one knows who she is to this day. Uh, 
So <laughs> I think it makes sense that you had a very privileged upbringing, Monet. No one would dare speak nasty about the the the, the crown prince of St. Lucia, honey. Anyways, when you see movies, right? Like for example, the 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 Nina Simone movie where Zoe Saldana got into a lot of controversy because she darkened her skin to play um, Nina Simone because Nina Simone was very dark skin and Zoe Saldana she's Afro Latina and she's she's like light skin or medium to light so she had to darken her skin that was a very big controversy. Do you remember that scene in um, Dream Girls where Beyonce? Uh, it's like a it is like a moment during um, during that's my dream where Beyonce is like painted like a dark skinned woman and it's literally yes. for like yes I remember uh, no 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 it was like it was like it was it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't that moment it was like in like the compilation that you see that after she leaves it's like her rise to stardom it's like all these different cuts and she is dark I know no, it she's was, in like no, it a, wasn't, it wasn't she's like she was a Nefertiti leaving. thing wait wait was it during was it during um uh listen yes it was that it was it was or I know it's it was like no, I it's think it was during it was movie. during it was during that's my dream where Jamie Foxx is singing that's my dream and it's and it shows because uh, it shows her doing the clip like all this stuff and then oh one yeah of the, maybe one, you're right yeah yeah I think you're right I, mean, I, you're I right. might be wrong it's been a while since I watched the movie but there was a scene where where Beyonce where Beyonce was like painted dark skinned and of course yeah. there's the infamous Tyra Banks uh, top model challenge where she made people change races and. And Different darken races, their skin bitch. and and lighten their skin. That was kind of wild. Yeah, um, you I mean, did, I, I, I go ahead. I, I, well, you once did blackface in one of your music videos, and I had a black. I had a photo shoot that I did in blackface. Um, that I used to hang in my mm. living room years ago too. But I think you and I were particularly evoking um, minstrelsy and like minstrel shows where people who probably were our color were still doing their faces up like that and also white people doing it. So it was, I, to me, that was like a different than painting to be a dark person. Well, it, it, it was... It, well, no, you know, you know, we were doing black, we were doing literal blackface and it was to provoke mm. thought and and, 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 get, and, and, and uh, further conversation. Yeah, because I think that even though, because I, I was surprised when I did that, a lot of people did not know what minstrel shows were. I'm like, I, but that's something that I even learned in school in like America. And I was like, I I thought that was like a that's, that's that's like part of the curriculum to learn about minstrel shows. Yeah, I mean, we learned in about the, it for sure. in like American in, in, curriculum uh, yeah. in the South. And I I wish I could impress upon you how much of uh, history in Georgia is Black history. Like you're taught a lot of well, at least when I was in school, maybe because I went to Black schools. But there you were like it, it, is, it is always Black History Month when I was in school. I live, I like and everything. It, it just it, it, ooh. I keep what? on talking. I'm gonna look up something. Well, it's really interesting how I felt like a lot of times when I was in school, we we were actually being taught something that people might today call critical race theory. We were we were talking about the impact of um, racism and and uh, racist acts and how they affect us today. We actually used to do that a lot in school. That's why I'm so shocked that people are like. But at the end again, I went to all black schools where teachers were my a lot of my teachers were black, and if they weren't black, they were teaching black kids. You know what I mean? So it wasn't a yeah. big shock to us. Um, Morgan Freeman recently had this thing about. Did you see Morgan Freeman and um, and the concept of Black History Month? Did you hear about this? Oh, I thought I knew. He said he, he said he doesn't he doesn't like Black History Month. What happens when the prostate oh. enlarges and the urine channel? Gets oh my God! Tight. What? Not the prostate? Hey, what are you googling? <laughs> y'all don't know. Y'all don't. Y'all, not you, not Monet trying to figure out how to find the prostate. Monet, how old are you? <laughs> you just turned thirty three. You should know how to find the prostate by now. Oh, Andy. Oh, Andy. You should be digging around. I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, my God. Anyway, he does a whole quote about how he doesn't like, um, he like, like perpetuating Black History Month. I mean, doing Black History Month perpetuates more racism because we need to like stop talking about. I don't, I mean, I, I, I want to say exactly how he said it. So I don't like bastardize what he's saying. Well, you, you didn't know, mind playing that. You didn't mind playing the prostate clips. Maybe you could play the, <laughs> since we all had to listen oh to your God. prostate uh, lessons. Can we listen to Morgan Freeman talk about colorism now? I mean, Black History Month, please. So the person says, on Black History Month, you find, he says, ridiculous. They said, why? He said, you're you're going to relegate my history to a month? The, the person says, come on. He says, what do, you, what do you do with yours? Which month is White History Month? Come on, tell me. He says, I'm Jewish. He's, Freeman says, okay, which month is Jewish History Month? Wallace says, there isn't one. Freeman says, why not? Do you want one? Wallace says, no, no. Freeman said, I don't either. I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. 
And then he goes on to say, and then Wallace says, how are you going to get rid of racism until Freeman says, stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace. You know me as Morgan Freeman. You're not going to say, I know this white guy named Mike Wallace. Hear what I'm saying? What do you think about that? I thought that to be well, very interesting. Well, to answer the question, Jewish History Month is May. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like, I get the sentiment of what there, he's there trying is, to say. There is, there, is, but, there is a Jewish History Month. But there is such a disparity. And I think right now, more than ever, we are, we are literally seeing <laughs> in Florida, they are actively not teaching about black history so you have to really get an entire month to it because if they have their way we would not talk about it at all so you can't just say uh it's it's, it's separating us more no you because of that you need to do it yeah I, don't, I i i would not approach it in the way that morgan freeman is approaching it this idea that if we all just act like if if, if enough of us act like racism doesn't exist it will just go away i i don't think that that most of us including morgan freeman can choose to opt out of racism you know what I mean? I understand that race is a yeah. social construct. Well, people with money, though, Bob. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Cutcher. Go ahead. I, under I understand that race is a social construct that comes from white supremacy, but you can't, but, but most people, especially black people, cannot just opt out of racism. You can't just be like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to acknowledge we're all part of the, we're all part of the human race. I really have a, there's something that really irks me when people say we're all part of the human race. That is a red flag to me. If someone says we're all just one race, the human race, it's not giving what you think it's giving. It is a red flag, and I am going to either roll my eyes or say something, depending on where we are and if it's appropriate. Like, like hearing, like, we, we're all one race, the human race. That is, that's, it's not what you think. It's not the serve you think it is, Mary. It is not the serve yeah. you think it is. But to your, to your point of saying about, people, about Morgan McCrewen can just erase him, uh, um, ruin himself from racism, I think that sometimes when people have a lot of money and access, they really think they can. There is that fucking crazy clip of Lil Wayne being like, man, we're, man, we're, we talking about some black kitchen, but man, we 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 talking about black people, man. We, we look at me. I I I'm making money under because he has so much money, and so much access to him. The concept of racism and being black, being um of uh, not being a hindrance to being successful, is is his reality. So he feels like he can erase racism from his experience. Yeah, but it will. But racism can can and still will find you, even if you have For a lot sure. of money. I mean, if Barack Obama is affected by racism. Then how is my black ass safe? So look, 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 Lil Wayne says it does not affect him. It is not a thing. Well, maybe, maybe you know, I, I don't know Lil Wayne's experience, and maybe, it, maybe he's genuinely just not affected by racism, or maybe he's changed his mind. That was a while back. Maybe, maybe he's in a different place now. You know what I mean? Maybe Lil Wayne is now like, actually, I've done some reflecting, and that's not the case anymore. I don't know. I hope so. When you're not feeling your best and you're trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Now, ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix your achy back, get that mole checked out, or anything else. ZocDoc's mobile app is easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com. Find the doctor that's right for you and book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash rivalry. ZocDoc dot com slash rivalry. You know, I found yeah, out that apparently, um, and, uh, and I might be misquoting, and they'll, 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 I'm sure someone in the, in the comments will drag me. But there was there was like kind of like a white flight from Cuba, where like a lot of light skinned people were leaving Cuba, and like the black people weren't leaving Cuba, um, and which is why. So one of the most famous black singers from Cuba, her name is uh, Celia Cruz, uh, and Celia Cruz, uh, she's the, the the famous singer who would always go Azuka. 
during her songs because mm-hmm. she always like to sprinkle a little bit of sweetness into her songs. And azúcar means uh, sugar in um sugar. In Spanish. And um, anyway, she's she's a black picante, woman. Picante, spice. Oh my god, azúcar, azúcar and um picante, azúcar y picante. Um, but but anyway, they um she ended up uh doing this song because she's a black a black woman from Cuba. She ended up doing this song called La Negra Tiene Tumbao, which means the black girl has it. So it's basically this because and, and apparently, obviously, you know, colorism is not is not is not a uniquely American problem. Colorism is yeah. not a uniquely American problem. I know America's funked up, but um, it is a problem in a lot of Latin, uh, Latin American countries. It is a problem. It, apparently, according to Kim, Kim told me uh, a while years ago that it is a kimchi. It, it is a it is a pretty big problem in a lot of Asian countries that you just do not. Yeah. If you come from an Asian country where most people aren't dark skin, they're like you just do not want to be dark. You don't want to get dark. You do you do not want to get dark. Yeah, Jasmine Rice was telling me this in Korea, like the whiter, like that's why you see, like the like the whiter you can get your skin, like the more, the more privileged you have and the more accessible it is. I'm like, that is crazy, girl. Is it that crazy? You live in America. Is it that crazy? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, yeah. I it's just it's just so. Well, nutty I think to it's me. I think it's wild when you think about it because like because like the the the, the race is a little bit more homogenous over there. It's not they're they're not at they're not as many uh the 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 the, the population racial makeup is not as uh diverse they're as it is in varying, America. Yeah. So it it, yeah. it does seem shocking that they would that they would be like that, especially when like in America white folks are out in these streets trying to get tans. And that's what I was about to say. These motherfuckers are spending hours on a beach to get darker. And were you, were you as a kid were you ever told to stay out stay out of the sun so you don't get blacker? I was. Yeah, I was told that. I mean, was I? Because you I, my family you gaslighting yourself. Monet's finally decided to start gaslighting herself. I thank God I get a break. <laughs> well, my family, we would go to the beach from for literally every Sunday. We would go to the beach from sun up to sundown, and we'd be out on the beach playing around and doing that ev- literally every Sunday. So it wasn't a thing of don't go to what. I think that as I got older, when I moved to America. And um, I would like go to the beach with my friends and cut school and stuff. I'm like, ah, I don't, I want to be in the sun. I want to get darker. Like that's I remember that. I don't think that came from like people at home or family or friends. You know, is there a big difference with your American family and your like, like your Saint Lucian family, like your family who's been living here most of their lives? Do you find that culturally they are a little bit different? Mm, no, because all my family that lives up here, like all my aunts and uncles and stuff, they go down to Saint Lucia at least once a year, and they're very in touch with our roots there and like our family there and they do lots of your celebrations and family. Is your, is your brother very American? He is very American. Very American. Are do they think you're very do they think you're very are they do they ever make fun of you for being American? Are they like, ooh, Kevin is American, honey. No, because when I get around my family, Bob, like I know y'all everyone makes fun of that video and like how I talk and stuff. When I get around my family, that's literally how I talk and I just like I just fall back into all those old habits. Like if you, know, you um, ever come with me to St. Lucia, I think you would be, you would be, you would be tickled pink. You would be like, "What is going on?" Like just, it's just how I behave with, with my family. Well, like paintball, I've never been invited, so maybe, maybe one day, if if any other St. Lucia people ever want to invite me to meet to meet their families and go to their mansions, I'm assuming you all have mansions. <laughs> I would love to come hang out with you all because I'm never gonna go fucking. And if I do go, I am gonna start the documentary Finding Julietta. <laughs> Find the Julia. Yeah, the documentary. Is Stop coming. saying her name wrong. So can you please try saying one time with the accent instead Julietta. of saying Julietta? Oh, that's that again. I don't want to say it again. I said it. One, I think once is enough. <laughs> you sound so good. You don't have to say my family's my is family's it, name with their accents. I do. I call Grandma Julia. Who else got an accent? Her name. Her name. Her name. Her name her name, her name is Grandma Julie. But you said someone's. Well, we call Jazz her Grandma Julia. Ju- so her, so some people call her Julia, but it's Grandma. Can you say Grandma? Grandma is it's not Grandma. It's Grandma. Grandma. Grandma Julie. Grandma, and then uh, uh, Justin. Justin. And uh, Martha. Martha. It's Martha. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Never been another, uh, another, but, like, what's your mom's name? Martha. <laughs> Martha. How do you? How would you say Martha? Martha. 
Martha. That is such a country name. Martha, I'm sorry, Martha is a is a old lady country name. Could you imagine like a, a like a a 14 year old from New York City named Martha? <laughs> like imagine a New York City 14 year girl like, what's up? My name's Martha. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the time Bob names change like now kids are named fucking Apple and uh, all these and crazy names <laughs> Apple and watch <laughs> <laughs> Can my, my name name some of your favorite light skinned people <laughs> oh my god you're That's so about ridiculous. To start naming. This is so messy. You were literally about to be like, oh yeah, let me think. No, I just uh, said, literally, I was processing. I just said, I was like, my favorite. And I was like, oh, he's, he's being silly. Do you, uh, remember, but, see, do you remember your first time seeing like, uh, is there, was there anyone that you ever saw on TV that really changed your, the way you look? I just saw this fucking interview recently and it honestly kind of drove me crazy and also made me feel deeply sad for the, for the women in the interview. It is Whoopi Goldberg and Joan Rivers. Mm-hmm. So Joan Rivers, Joan Rivers had a really low self-esteem about her looks. She felt really bad about her looks. She talked about it all the time. She always, always thought she was ugly. She was always going on and on and on about how ugly she thought she was all the time. And she's sitting down in an interview with, with Whoopi Goldberg, and she's like, do you ever wish you were beautiful? And Whoopi Goldberg was like, I am beautiful. And she was like, no, 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 no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are these, these girls, she started naming it, but she's like, do you ever wish that you were, like, really beautiful? And Whoopi Goldberg had to be like, what, what, like, ex- like, could you, like, how what year was this? this? Just type in Joan Rivers versus Whoopi, Joan Rivers Whoopi Goldberg be- uh, interview. It was, it was, it was honestly gaggy. Yeah. I could not believe that that she asked her, "Have you ever wished you were beautiful?" Whoopi, Joan Rivers. I was blown away. I could not believe Dang. she had the nerve to say that to her. That's tough. Now, did you ever wish you were beautiful? Like, bitch, the fuck you talking to? Shift that points. I mean, not for me. Oh, honey. Oh, wouldn't you like to be thin and gorgeous? Truth. I am. I am gorgeous. You know, listen, for me, it used to be the Brett girl. Yes. Yes. Wow. On the back of the magazine and it never moved. That to me was the epitome. And then I realized that, you know, somebody had to build that. You know, that that wasn't like when you wake up in the morning. When I wake up in the morning these days, I look at the mirror and I think, you know what? Yes, Whoopi. But also, when I had that shit like a boss, and when I was a kid, I used to like hear about Whoopi Goldberg being ugly, and they just and it it, it was so ingrained because it it was such a popular line from The Color Purple: "You show me, you show Mm -hmm. is ugly." It was this very Mm -hmm. popular line from The Color Purple, so I kind of grew up with the idea that Whoopi Goldberg was ugly, which is upsetting because I look like Whoopi Goldberg. Like, I'm telling y'all, if I wear the Whoopi wig, can we please put the picture here of me dressed as Whoopi Goldberg? Like, I like I literally look like Whoopi Goldberg. So I had to just kind of accept, well, if Whoopi's ugly, then I have to be ugly because they said she's ugly. Oh, no, ugly. Like, Roberta, you're beautiful. Okay. Anyway, um, but what, what was... Uh, Why is that okay like that? I let, let, me, let, me pro, let me process my feelings. No, it was, it was really... <laughs> um, it was just really upsetting. To see. But then I look back at old pictures of Whoopi Goldberg, and now, even now... Um, and just think to myself how gorgeous she is. Like I like I think Whoopi Goldberg is just has always been just so beautiful, truly beautiful. Mm-hmm. Did you see when someone when someone was shading her on, on the View recently about her about her weight? Who? I think it was Judge Shapiro. I think it was Judge Shapiro. Well, she's maybe. a fucking crazy dumb bitch. Of course she would. She's that crazy conservative bitch. Maybe it wasn't Shapiro. It was so. Who was it? I'm not. Someone's gonna remember. Someone said something about Whoopi's weight on the View, and it was it was it was not received well. It was, it was Did like Whoopi going on her. It was was it Sunny Hostin? No, no way. Sunny would say something about Whoopi's weight. No. It wasn't Sunny. It, it was someone on the view, and they were like, "They said something about about losing weight." And they looked at Whoopi Goldberg, and they were like, "Oh, it's like two pair. Of, this is like my pants are like two pair of your pants, or something like that." I was gagged. No, I was gagged, and everyone was kind of like, "What?" Also, can I tell you real quick? Are you are, tell me you're familiar with 
with Joy Behar versus uh, RuPaul. Of course, RuPaul oh. gathered her like a RuPaul gathered her like a ponytail, honey. She said, she said, I was not, do- I was not dogging her ass. I was just telling her like a tr years, okay. That's one of my <laughs> favorite. I was not dogging her. You call me butch, well, you're a bitch. Well, all it is that you, you know, when you, then she starts imitating Joy Behar's voice. She goes, you go, why do you look so good? And then um, Joy Behar goes, you think I'm going to take fashion advice from a drag queen? And RuPaul goes, well, honey, you better take it from somebody. <laughs> when, she, <laughs> when she said, well, <laughs> you think I'm going to take fashion advice from a drag queen? Well, honey, you better take it from somebody. That is, I'm going to, uh, can we put that in? We, we have to play. To yeah, in? we can't. It's not, it's not copyrighted. I'm gonna find it and play it. Oh, uh, it was so. And I, I mean, I, I want them to like actually put the sound in. I want them to put the sound in. Well, you know what? I have to say, and when I saw her backstage, I have to say that they did fem her up. I love the haircuts. Don't the hair look great? The hair looks the hair. great, yeah. and uh, you're wearing nice, nice colors and stuff. I love nice colors and stuff. That's my new favorite compliment. You wearing nice, you wearing nice colors and stuff. But the slacks, you know. <laughs> she looks fabulous. Do you think that I'm gonna take fashion advice from a drag queen? Well, honey, <laughs> my sister, you better take. Listen, Joy, you better take it from somebody. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you think? You think? You think? You think? You think I'm gonna take? You think I'm gonna take fashion advice from a drag queen? Well, honey, Joy, you better take it from somebody. You better take it from somebody. Now, RuPaul's the voice you, is so fab. She goes, well, you better take it from somebody. <laughs> um, so I remember, I think I watched, uh, this was a YouTube thing I watched, or maybe I watched a documentary on Netflix or something like that. But Brazil does this annual competition. It's called the Globazilla to find a carnival queen. And like, they like dance in multiple shows. And it's like, it's like, it's like the big thing that people like do in Brazil. And generally, is it like, it is, is it like Miss America? Yeah, but a little different. But the same thing, right? I don't think it's not all the same categories. I don't think it's more about okay. dancing and like you being the carnival queen. And then um, it always goes to light skinned women. Well, a dark skinned woman named Nayara Justino won the title for the first time. She was the first dark skinned woman to ever do so because it was a public vote. Like people from Brazil were voting for this woman to win, and she is stunningly fucking beautiful. Okay, but after she won, there was a lot of racial um, racist backlash against her for winning um, on on Facebook and Twitter. People saying all kind of shit. So they removed the title from her, and they never gave her a reason why. And what and what happened and they, after that? They I, I I don't remember they gave it to like another light skinned woman, but she because she was dark skinned and people were commenting that they didn't like a, a dark skinned person. One they took the title from her. Like, it's like this prestigious thing that everyone, the, like the whole nation, like comes together to, to choose this carnival queen and they strip the title from her. Isn't that crazy because she's dark? Who's, so it's weird because like, obviously most people wanted her to be the carnival queen. So if most people wanted her to be the carnival queen, it seems like there were just a few people complaining. Like, like how does that work? How does that even work? I don't and know. the one other part of that story that is, um, is the network didn't say that when they fired her. So they said it was yeah. her, the network said her artistic skills were not a match for the role. So but uh, like the implication that is what the implication is. It was because of her. Well, you know the first black Miss America got her um title strip too. Who? When? Why? Monet, you don't know who the first black Miss America is? Tell me this is Vanessa a bit. Williams? Yes, Vanessa Williams the but first I didn't, black I didn't realize Miss that she got it it was stripped from her. I did not know that she, part. She got had a strip for taking scandalous photos. Mm. I did not know that it got taken from her. Gagiana. But I don't even think the photos were that scandalous. I think it was like vaguely scandalous, but she was black. You're Mike fucking... Jacob. Um, that like like I'm not. I, I don't want to. You know, I'm not going to look it up. I don't want to disgrace Jennifer, Vanessa Jennifer Williams. Vanessa we're not, Williams we're, like not, we're discussing her her history. She's a big part of American history. Let's see why would why was Vanessa Williams stripped of title? Williams became the first black woman to win the crown in 1983, but when Penthouse magazine published unauthorized nude photos of her, 
I guess they were nude. She was forced to resign her title. And That's apparently sucks. there were unauthorized nude photos. According so to shady. DefenderNetwork.com. I have a question. How does mm-hmm. how does colorism show up in your life? Like, do you see your like? Do you is this something that you like are constantly or you have a lot of interactions with? Like, do you experience colorism a lot? You think? Um, maybe not as much as I did when I was younger. I think the world is actually getting a lot better. When I was younger, it just kind of felt like it was just constant. Like it really, mm-hmm. as a child, it really felt like it was just constant. But I think the world is getting better. I that's why I am so grateful for these fucking these little Gen Z shits. Cause I think they are honestly <laughs> they are gathering us millennials and these Gen Xers and these fucking boomers. They are gathering us and not letting us breathe a second. And honestly, y'all keep it up, keep the pressure on, because this is what this, in my opinion, this is truly what we need in our next generation this is what we need from in my opinion yeah i agree um i don't i don't think it shows up a whole lot in my life i mean i see the discourse about it a lot online right like you have like and he says that he doesn't but there are literally like screenshots and things online that exist how people like chris brown like they don't let like darker skinned girls into the vip or saying that light skinned girls only like i see like a lot of a lot, i see a lot of discourse about colorism that way not necessarily, and I and, and obviously I'm not stupid. I know it, I know it, it shows up in ways professionally. Is that work obvious? And it's, Is that obvious? What that you're not stupid? I know that it probably shows up a lot in work, and because I don't have a traditional job where I'm like you know in an office, but I'm trying to think of like um things that I've I've encountered colorism or seen it at play on set or on different things. I don't think I have. But I know that it does show up there. But I, I, I agree with you. I think it is getting better. And um, the younger generations are, is very, uh, is, is a big reason, is a big reason in part why that is happening, for sure. For some reason, I don't really like when, I think it's just my past trauma, but I don't like when other people, especially white people, acknowledge how black I am in a room full of people. It feel, and, it, and it does happen every once in a while. And sometimes it is pertinent to the conversation. Um, but other times, just like, I don't know why we need to discuss how, how like, and not just that, not the fact that I am black. Does that happen a lot? That's not crazy. A lo- not a lot, but enough But it just happened that, at all. Yeah. Yeah, it has happened before, yeah. Because, like, somehow, whatever the conversation is going on, and, you know, it, it usually comes up when white people talk about tanning. When white people talk about tanning and how dark they get in the summer, especially white people who tan and go, I get really dark in the they summer. They love telling you, just just as much as they like telling you um, how, how much their eyes change color. White people mm-hmm. love telling you how dark they get. Have you ever had a white person tell you they get as dark as you in the summer? Yes, many times. Monet, I've had white people tell me they get as dark as me. <laughs> Y'all, and for those of you who are, who are strict <laughs> listeners and you've never watched this podcast, Yo, I am black. Like I'm maybe not as dark with as with a capital Lupita, black. With a capital, I am. I am literally Whoopi Goldberg's complexion. I I am like one sh- one shade lighter than Lupita Nyong'o. I'm the same shade as Wesley Snipes. I'm the shade of Bernie Mac. I'm the shade of who else? Like just name a dark skinned celebrity. Like I am that black. Like Michael, y'all know Michael Blackson, the comedian. I'm literally that black. So when Bob, Bob white, is so black, Jeffrey Star doesn't doesn't carry his his shade range. <laughs> Literally. So when someone looks at me and says, when a white person <laughs> has, gets the gall, the unmitigated gall <sighs> to tell me that they I get can't. as black as me in the summer, I gag every time. That is Even so saying as dark as me is crazy. problematic. Well, it, well, it, it, fuck problematic. It's just a lie. It's just a lie. Yeah. No, Amber, so you crazy. don't get as black as me. It was Amber. Oddly enough, I know way more black girls named Amber than I do. Like I know more black women and girls named Amber than white white women and girls. I know that's true for me. The only white black Amber I know is Amber Riley. But that's probably because I went to yeah. school. I went to school with most of the black people, so all the girls I went to school with were called. Were oh my black. God, we get it. You went to school with a whole bunch of niggas. We get it. Damn. Okay. Not the hard R. Not the hard R. <laughs> Not the hard R. Mm, rewind the tapes. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Uh, Amber oh. Ruffin. Amber Ruffin. Yeah. Who's Amber Ruffin? Y'all know Amber Ruffin. Yeah, Who's Amber the Ruffin? host, the late night host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut yeah. the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. So, oh, so now you have Shut Peacock. Name, name, name two other shows on Peacock. Then, since you're the queen of Peacock, Traders, The Freshmen of Bel Air. But enough about folk. you as a trailer. Have you watched Chris Folk? Is uh, Chris Folk didn't get renewed. I know that sucks. Amber I'm Rose. Like, Amber is Rose. She, She's like she black. Is she black? Yeah. Bob. Oh I saw Amber, my god. I didn't know she was black. I thought she was. I thought Amber Rose was. Amber Rose is, is black? black with a capital black. Yeah, she's from she's from Cape Verde and so on on in the coast of Africa. I don't know. She, you, well, so, so, oh Charlie my god! Charlie Theron is from Africa too. <laughs> I yeah, but Amber Rose is black. What do you mean? Is she black? She looks black. Her father. Does she not look her black father to you? is. She doesn't. Her father is Irish and Italian descent, and her mother is of Cape Verdean and maternal Scottish. So she's a so she's three quarters white and one quarter black, according to this thing I just read. That's so much. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying she's not black, but I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, it's, it's giving light skin. Oh, no, this is the problem. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry, that was a bit. It was a bit. I, I joke. I played too much. I know. I, I know. I joke too much. I know. I know. <laughs> you, okay, here's the question I always ask people, which is crazy to me that some people don't think this. This is crazy to me. Do you think Mariah Carey looks black? Okay, so growing up, I did not know Mariah Carey was black. And you're and like, you think it's crazy that I didn't know Amber Rose was black? But I was also young, and I'm not an adult. Like I'm talking about when, when like when I would see my mom have like butterfly CD and the number ones. Like when I was like nine, ten. Like I didn't realize when I went to high school, I was like, oh, she's black. I didn't know that. But when I was young, young, I did not know she was she was black. I knew she was black. She also just kind of sounds black. I know that's problematic to say, but she just sounds like a black woman. I didn't like hear when her talks, speak when I was like young. when she talked when she sings. She sounds black. When she talks, she has that that New York accent. But you, there are there are black the white people that sound black. Jojo Jojo sounds like a black woman when she sings. But she, but she's white though. I know, but I'm saying, but she she sounds like she sings black. It's true. For for whatever reason, I just knew Mariah Carey was black. Okay, you don't know the moment that gagged me in life. This is the moment that blew my mind. I was what? a kid watching the Jackson Five movie. And I was like, why is this little black kid playing Michael Jackson? I said, Mom, why does, why does this guy got an afro playing Michael Jackson as a kid? It doesn't make sense. And my mom was like, boy, Michael Jackson is black. And I was like, wait, I'm sorry. What? And she was like, Chris, Michael Jackson is black. And I was like, okay, I have eyes, right? And I'm look, I'm, I've <laughs> two seen two of them. I want either side of my nose. I have seen Michael Jackson. He that is a that's a white man. Like that is and my mom's like, no, Michael Jackson. Uh, now this mom, everyone think trying to explain being gay to kids or drag to kids. Try to try explaining that a black man just turned white. I yeah, was that like, is wild. I was like, what is happening? She's like, he has a disease that makes you turn white. And I was like, well, why is his hair white? Like, why does he have white hair? She goes. Well, he would have an afro if he didn't wear the wigs or get his hair straightened. And I was like, okay, I have what a question. about his- Wait, 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 wait. So the vitiligo turned him white? I thought, I, I, all this time, I thought that he was doing like skin lightening to become white. I didn't realize the vitiligo did that. So there are, so no one knows for sure, but there are cases of vitiligo where a person can, can lose all of their, it will spread over the entire body. There are some very mm. rare cases of vitiligo where it spreads and there you're left with, very low, very very few dark spots on your skin, and other people said that he had a bit of light going. And then he tried to even out his skin by by bleaching it, as opposed by to bleaching it. it. So no one no no one knows for sure. I mean, some I'm sure someone knows, but it's not public information whether or not he whether or not his bit of light go changed his all of his skin white or not. Well, I always knew he was black because I I guess I just grew up knowing Michael Jackson was black, even though I didn't because I, I I heard the Jackson Five and Michael Jackson before I saw them. So I always knew that he was black. So when I just saw him as an adult, I just thought he was just a light-skinned black person. It was when I saw the movie, when I got older, I was like, oh, he was dark when he was young. But I always knew he was black, though. Well, it never made sense to me why Janet Jackson was black and Michael Jackson was white. I was just like, 
it just I never I was a kid, so I just never my mom was like, Well, Janet Jackson's black. And I was like, Yeah, she is. Mm-hmm. I was like, she sure is. I was I was thinking maybe maybe uh maybe Michael Jackson's mom uh, you know, re got remarried to a black man and then Janet Jackson came out. I didn't know what was going on. That was also got the it. same the same week that my mom told me that RuPaul was a man. And I was like, What is happening? Like, really? What is, I was like, Y'all come on. Someone's gotta tell the truth in this house. Because apparently we'll just we'll just say anything. You need to listen to someone. Well, honey, you gonna have to listen to somebody. Um, but yeah, I remember my mom. I was I was like, "How is RuPaul a man? That that literally doesn't make sense." I'm looking at her. She is that is I'm that is a woman. Like I'm I'm literally looking at a woman right now. My mom he went back like, to being a news. man. Did you ever think RuPaul was a? Did you ever? Do you remember RuPaul from, from your childhood? Yeah, I remember seeing his show on VH1. I can remember like scrolling through it on, on on TV, but I don't know when I remember like knew he was a drag queen. But I do remember seeing his talk show like here randomly on TV. You better work, cover girl, cover girl, Good girl, give a twirl, give a twirl, do your thing. Um, the Bob, how are you going to combat thing. colorism today? If you could, if you could do one thing to combat colorism, how would you do it today? Break up with you. Oh my god! <laughs> You're a monster. If I could um, do one thing to come back colorism today, it would be to go to get down to fucking Brazil and make Nayara Justino the Brazilian queen for the next decade. Well, how would you do that? Well, I'm just I'm saying, if I had like a magic wand, I could wave. Well, if you have a magic wand, I think there's probably <laughs> you're gonna waste it on Bob. Can, I, ha- it can on... I have my thing? Let me, let me have no, my you... thing. I don't need you to correct my plan. That's no, what I want. You can have it. I just it's just that I found out that you. I just found out you have a magic wand, and there's all this stuff going on in the world, and you're like, we need to find out who's gonna be the queen of carnival, honey. That's, that is that is the that is the first thing I'm doing. I'm gonna restore for a, and for a full decade. <laughs> it just feels like maybe maybe your magic wand could be put to other uses. You know what I mean? Let me. That's this is my moment. So I want to do my magic wand. Do what you want with yours, bitch. Okay. If if I had a magic wand, I, I probably would not uh, be working on um, titles like 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 Queen of Carnival. <laughs> I, I I would probably um, maybe if I could wave my wand and my wand could uh, like. I don't know something about like I think it needs to start with like kids and like the way that they perceive themselves and and maybe all the little you know I wouldn't even want and, and I would and I would like not allow little kids to like uh, make fun of each other for the color of their skin. Mm. Hmm. Okay. I like that. That's I have a dream to today that my four little children will one day be judged. Not by the color of their color skin, of their skin but, by but by the, the content, content of their character. I have a dream today. I was. It should have been the content. The content. Someone should turn uh, Martin Luther King's "I Have a Dream" speech into a into a fierce fucking. I'm sure it's out there. Track. Oh, maybe not that. Imagine. Guess what? Used, what? I'm black with a capital black. I got my little. I got my little Bob the Drag Queen. Often my letter of authenticity, honey. Now I have a bone to pick with you, bitch. You black bitch. I have a bone okay, to pick I'm with ready. you. Why wasn't I number one of 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 one fifty? Why am I why am I forty one forty one? Huh? Cause I have forty I have forty friends that I wanted to send before I sent to you. I have forty, 40 bitch, hundred and forty. I'm sorry, I misspoke. One hundred and forty. What of it? And you and you and you and you know who was number one? The rightful, the rightful queen of Saint Lucia, Julieta. Lucia? Yeah, get, bitch, get the country name right. Talk about some Ju- uh, Saint Lucia. Julieta, <laughs> honey. The, yeah, the the true queen of Saint Lucia, who's been done wrong by the by the, by the by the the Burton crime family for way too long, and we will no longer be bullied. We will no longer be intimidated by the Burton crime family. <laughs> that Burton crime. Do you want to do you want to apologize to Julieta's family? Julieta is living her life thriving, okay? You don't know. You have no clue. You literally have no clue. 
Your family doesn't know. tell you what the, your your family doesn't tell you when they do their crimes. They don't tell you. They want you to stay innocent. That you, my, my, do you remember as a kid how many times your mother told you to go to the other room and, and and put on your headphones? Do you remember when she would say, "Go to your room, go to the West Wing"? She would say, "Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, go to the West Wing, go to the West Wing, put on your headphones." Does that sound familiar? And then you would, <laughs> I can't. And you would put them and accent. turn the volume all. You would turn the volume all the way up. And then she would say, and you come out in the whole house smelled like fucking pine saw randomly. Is that a coincidence, Monet? I had to go. I can't listen to this propaganda anymore. Go do anymore. what? Go do what? I have things How to do. I go to, I go to D.C. tomorrow. You have a current housekeeper? She's not, a, she's not a housekeeper. She's someone that helps my grandmother, which I said before. My grandmother is very old. In the house you assistant. live in right now. In the house you live in right now. In New York, in oh, LA. No. no. You don't have nobody come over and help you clean your house. You don't have a you don't have a cleaning lady. Yeah, the same lady that you use. We use the same lady. Oh yeah. And that's I literally I sent her you so I can keep an eye on her and make sure she's safe from <laughs> yeah, you and your crime family. Sure. <laughs> sure. That is why the only reason is Yeah, because I don't want you to cause you cause I don't want you to commit, commit crimes or I can keep an eye on her. I check on her when she, she comes over. She's literally crying every week from what you and 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 fuck and 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 the dog and especially the cat do to her when she's there. <laughs> You're wild. The same one you use, bitch, is what I have. So, you know, keep an eye on her. I love you very much, but but I am I gonna you. hold you accountable. Lie. But I will hold you accountable. Bye. Bye.